Hey gang, so when it comes to using Google Apps in the classroom, we've got one of the top experts in the U.S. with us right here in Michigan. John Sowash is the Director of Online Learning over at Southfield Christian Schools. And when it comes to teaching and learning with Google, he's one of the gurus. Now for this REMC Connected Educator Series Showcase, John's going to share 10 ways that you can start using Google Apps in your own classroom. As always, we hope this sparks some great ideas and enjoy learning from one of the best. Hi, my name is John Sowash, and I'm the Director of Online Learning at uh, Global Christian School Online, which is a division of Southfield Christian School just outside of Detroit, Michigan. Um, in addition to my administrative responsibilities, I am a classroom teacher, and uh, I taught uh, science for four years, and I'm currently teaching uh, yearbook to our high school students. In addition, I'm a Google Certified Teacher and a Google Apps Certified Trainer. And today I'd like to share with you how I use Google Apps with my students and how my school has used Google Apps to encourage collaboration and creativity in our student body. First off, Google Apps is a free suite of tools that educators can use to, um, again, build 21st century learning uh, skills in their students and encourage collaboration. Collaboration is really the, the key component that's built into Google Apps. Um, it's really good and includes four um, tools um, such as Gmail, um, Google Docs, Google Calendar, and Google Sites. Those are the, uh, the tools. Um, it is free. Uh, businesses pay for it, but uh, Google is offering it for free to educators, and so it's a win-win for everybody. Again, here are the uh, four tools that um, are the the foundation of the Google Apps Suite, Calendar, Docs, Sites, and Gmail. There's lots of other secondary applications that you can also access through the Google Apps Suite. This is just a few of them. Some very popular tools here including Blogger, Google Books, and YouTube, um, which have some great classroom applications. There's some third-party apps that you can use as well. And these companies are using the Google Apps platform on which they're building um, their own tools. The nice thing about accessing any of these tools through Google Apps is it is single sign-on so your students have one login and uh, password which gives them access to not only their Google tools but also these or any of the other tools that you may choose to enable for your domain. Aviary is a great tool that allows for um, audio editing and podcasting and also is kind of a Photoshop and uh, Adobe Creative Suite um, replacement. It has a, a Photoshop-like tool, an Illustrator-like tool. That's a really nice one. Learn Boost is a great book program. EasyBib I know is very, very popular in education and uh, if your students have EasyBib accounts, the neat thing is through Google Apps, they don't have to sign into those accounts. They can just access them through their Google Apps username and password. BrainPop and SlideRocket are two other uh, popular ones for education. Now, why would you want to use Google Apps? Uh, and there's three reasons that I would suggest. Number one is for organization. Um, Gmail, Calendar, Docs, and Sites are all well suited to help organize your classroom, whether it's communicating with students, keeping track of homework calendars, uh, keeping track of documents, sharing documents with students, receiving files from students, or creating a website for um, publishing student work or announcements and homework. Second reason to use Google Apps is for easy communication and calendar sites and Gmail are all well suited to do that as well. Gmail makes email very very easy. You can check multiple accounts. You can send uh, pre-formatted responses, filter your email messages, really nice. Calendars can be shared with multiple users enabling them to get up-to-date uh, information on activities, events, and homework assignments. And then sites also a great way to um, integrate a lot of these tools together embedding a uh, calendar into a site, posting documents, uh, very, very helpful. And then finally, uh, Google Apps can be used to encourage authentic learning instead of just using bubble tests or uh, multiple choice exams. You can uh, have students create using Google Sites or Google Docs to really demonstrate their knowledge of a subject. So I'd like to share with you next my top 10 ways to use Google Apps in the classroom. The first one may seem overly simplistic, but it really is a big, uh, big deal. Using Gmail, you can communicate with students. 
at my school, Southfield Christian, all of our students have Gmail accounts. And the number one uh, thing that students have uh, appreciated the most about having Google Apps is the ability to email uh, teachers. Uh, students won't call teachers, especially not at 11 or 12 o'clock at night when they need help, but they will send them an email. And so the email has really increased the level of communication um, between students and teachers flowing in both directions. My second uh, way to use Google Apps in the classroom is to create a, a homework calendar. Google Apps allows you to create multiple calendars which are layered on top of one another. You can share those calendars with other people if you wish. So I would recommend creating a calendar for your class and then posting all of your assignments um, on that calendar. You can then share that calendar with students via email, embed it into your class page, or have students add it to their calendar. All of the events are updated in real time so you can ensure that uh, everybody has the most up-to-date calendar. My third way is to use uh, Google Calendar for collaborative lesson planning. You can create a calendar for your unit or team or department and then um, all plan your lessons on that calendar. The neat thing about this is you can also attach documents to a calendar event. So here in the screenshot you can see that we have an event and um, I've posted a presentation and a document into this calendar event which others can access and view as well. Number four is a really cool one, and that is to have students work collaboratively using Google Docs. Google Docs is the only tool that allows for real-time collaboration in a document setting. It's really, really neat to see students use this for the first time. It, their draws drop, and they just think it's the coolest thing ever as they see 15, 20, 30 of their classmates simultaneously editing a document in real time. And you can see the characters being typed, and everybody gets a separate color. It's really fun. You can do something similar in uh, Google Docs spreadsheets. Um, it's a spreadsheet tool very similar to Microsoft Excel. And you can do everything in Google Docs spreadsheets that you can do in Excel, uh, including um, for, uh, uh, functions and formulas um, to automatically calculate a variety of things. Um, I have a fun lab that I do with um, M&Ms where students uh, get mini bags of M&Ms and they open them up and they predict the color of M&Ms in the bags and then actually count them and we enter that data into one spreadsheet as a class and you can see the data being tabulated and averaged in real time which is a lot of fun. My sixth way to use Google Apps in the classroom is to um, use Google Docs presentation very similar to uh, PowerPoint the challenge with PowerPoint is that our presentations as teachers are always being updated. We're tweaking, we're changing, and every time we make a change, we have to re-upload that presentation to our class site or re-email it to our students so that they have the most current version. Because Google Docs presentation lives in the cloud, every time I make a change, it's automatically pushed out to wherever I've shared that presentation, whether it's with a specific user or I've posted it on my class page or on my Google site. So I don't have to worry if um, my students have the most recent version. Tip number seven is to create a class page using Google Sites. This is a, a very um, brief screenshot here of my class page when I was teaching AP Biology. And this is where I can kind of pull all of my resources together, posting my documents, my presentations, my homework calendar, um, uh, a Google group if we're having a class discussion uh, you can add discussion boards a lot of neat things you can do here to make uh, a one-stop shop for your students to have all access to all of the tools that they need tip number eight is also related to Google sites instead of um, you creating the site have your students create a Google site this is a screenshot of a um, biome uh, Google site that my ninth grade biology students created last year the purpose of this was to have them research a specific biome and then post that information in a website that others could view. So we had about 15 of these ranging from the coral reefs to the arctic tundra to the deep ocean and students filled it in and then themed and styled their site to reflect the ecosystem that they were researching. It's a great way to have students create something to demonstrate their learning. Wrapping up, we have two more tips left. Tip number nine 
is to save time by searching the Google Docs template library. This template library contains thousands and tens of thousands of um, templates that teachers have created and other users have created. You can find calendar templates, lesson templates, um, site templates, spreadsheets to calculate everything you can imagine. Uh, so instead of creating something from scratch, research or do a search in the template library to see if something else might be available. My final tip and uh, a favorite of educators is to use Google Forms to collect information from students or for anybody for that matter. Google Forms is um, a tool that fits on top of a Google site and it's a very nice user-friendly very um, nice looking form that you can have uh, people fill in and that the data in that form dumps into a Google spreadsheet which you can manipulate and uh, tabulate as you wish. I do this every year on the first day of school. I load up a form on a mobile device, be it an iPod Touch or an iPad, and have students uh, fill in their name, their email address, uh, phone number, and other contact information so that I have that readily accessible for me. So those are my 10 tips for using Google Apps for education. If you don't have Google Apps, um, it is free and schools can sign up. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You can do so either by contacting Google Direct and um, inquiring how you can sign up for Google Apps for Ed or you can work through a um, reseller and contact someone uh, such as myself who is a Google certified teacher and trainer and they can get you set up and ready to go as well. If you're not a Google Apps school, you can also simply create a free Gmail account and you'll have access to all of those tools and you can start sharing with students. Lots of ways you can learn more about Google Apps for Education. Um, there's some links here. Um, I've created a, a bundle of blogs that are um, written by teachers who use Google Apps on a regular basis. The Google Apps Training Center is a very comprehensive guide with step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up a lot of the things I talked about today. Uh, for all of our Michigan teachers, the Great Lakes Google Apps User Group is a community of several hundred educators who are using Google Apps and ask questions and provide support uh, for teachers using uh, Google Apps. Uh, there's also a free podcast series that I've created on uh, the MI Learning channel of iTunes U. And uh, you can find that by searching for Google uh, Tools in the iTunes Store and download those to your iPhone or iPod. Um, I'm also a participant in the Google Educast, which is a weekly production of the EdReach Network. And you can download that to your mobile device as well. Uh, you can learn more about that at edreach.us. And then I'm very excited today to announce that on October 19th of uh, 2012, we will have the first ever My Google Educators Conference here at my school, Southfield Christian. I would encourage you to make plans to attend that conference, which is sponsored by McCall. Um, and if you're interested in presenting or being a part of the planning committee for that, I would love to have your assistance. You can get in touch with me about uh, the My Google Conference or uh, any of the other things that I've shared. I'd love to um, interact with you and connect with you. You can connect with me via my blog, which is The Electric Educator, electriceducator.com. Um, I'm on Twitter, a very avid Twitter user. You can hit me up at at jrsowash or um, my email address is posted there as well, jrsowash at sowashventures.com. It's been a pleasure uh, sharing a little bit with you about how I use Google Apps in my classroom. I hope this Remsey Connected Educator Series showcase on Google gave you some ideas about how you can start using it in your own classroom. As always, we look forward to bringing more of these to you in the future. See you back here soon.